Greetings, YouTube. Uh, as always, please subscribe below. That helps us out a lot and thumbs up our videos. I know that's kind of hard on some of the mobile devices, but please go and definitely subscribe. It helps us out. Um, so today I have a Kirby, I mean a Royal. I mean, um, so yes, I know it's a Royal, but uh, I have to make fun of it because it's kind of a, a backwards Kirby in a lot of ways. Uh, it's not a bad machine. It's very much a niche market. Like it, they niche market these for a long, long time. I'm gonna say it was a niche market, and it's becoming even more of a niche market. Um, there's Royal has. I can no longer order metal Royal upright uh, home units. So they, uh, you know, Royal and Hoover being the same company, you know, Hoover Commercial's really taken over and these have been really phased out in favor of a lot of other machines. But a ton of these were sold in the, from the late 80s to the 90s up until like the early 2000s, right bef um, before the economy crash. These were sold like hotcakes at vacuum stores. And we sold these and they were had a bell housing, they were going to last forever. Um, unfortunately, most of them have been thrown away and traded up for other vacuums. Um, there are better vacuums, yes, but this is a really, really good vacuum and a very serviceable vacuum. So we're going to go through today and service this. And um, this is a little bit new for my taste in terms of Royals. I really like the Royals, uh, kind of pre-1990. Um, date this one for y'all. This was a 98, as old as my nephew. Um, so there were a couple of unknown issues. The first thing uh, is the squeaky wheels. So these things actually handle really, really well. Uh, they don't have a self-propel. Um, but these wheels always squeak like a motherfucker. Um, I don't know what's why they didn't just put ball bearings. <laughs> these are supposed to be like roller skate wheels, but they didn't give ball bearings to them for, I guess they were trying to save money, Amos. but they all have these wheels and they all squeak when they come in and you can hear a royal coming when a customer pushes it up. Um, so today this customer brought it to me, uh, their wood brush roller fell apart and these wood brush rollers really are designed to last two to four years. Um, so yeah, you also have uh, some markings on the base plate that should belt and all that. So we're going to go through, we're going to do actually a full service on this one. Um, I'm, uh, some of the older Royals, they had a, a sleeve bearing you lubricated in the rear occasionally. This is not one of those models. Again, this is a newer style, but not the newest style. Uh, but it takes the Royal B bag. And there's also a scent holder, which I like to pull off. I'm trying to decide how far apart we're actually going to pull this thing. And I think, I think first thing I'm going to do is pull the cleaner head off. Um, and the casing off and get that nice and clean. Um, and again, these, these machines are very serviceable. They're meant to be serviced. There's, uh, you know, I don't want to be accused of hating a brand again, uh, but there's, there's nothing wrong with the Royal. Um, it's not, you know, there are definitely more modern vacuums. I think given the choice, any consumer, anybody would pick over a Royal. have kind of a nice niche brand. Um, so you see, we're going to just separate uh, this. This one's got the light. They usually do this, they have models with them without the lights. And I, honestly, I don't, I don't service a lot of these lights. Um, it's just kind of, guess what was sold around my area. But, so you have a thing here. Aha. Uh -huh. So again, very, very serviceable. Looks like actually this is somebody's been in here already. There are these gray wire nuts, which are a favorite thing among vacuum shops. And the mismatched blue wire nut tells me somebody's been in here. Um, so one of the things that separates a Royal from a modern Kirby is it uses this cheap casted aluminum fan. And I'm going to use the words cheap to describe its quality. Um, even though this moves a great amount of airflow, cleans well. Nobody's nobody's gonna debate that. Aluminum fans just break easier than their polymer fans because they don't flex, so they tend to crack and chip. 
Um, it's just not the ideal uh, material. And every other company moved away from this except for Royal uh, TTI for some reason. Um, the other thing is that uh, these shafts can be changed, just but they don't come with the fans when you order. Um, and then the yokes have been through a few revisions. Uh, so just like a Kirby, this thing's made out of cast aluminum for the most part. And as we all know the problem with cast aluminum is uh, it's kind of a cheap metal. Uh, definitely not something... If it was steel, I think I could see some advantages. Uh, but it weighs so much. It already weighs so much. So it's this weird... It's a very niche machine of somebody who wants a quality machine. But it's also somebody who doesn't want to pay for Kirby. So I guess the market is somebody who got a Kirby uh, from a dealer. It's all right. By the way, we're separating the cleaner head. Which doesn't come qu quickly off on most Royal models. There was a one more Royal model that had a quick release head, but this isn't it. And I'll do a video on that sometime. Because uh, I have a friend who has one of those. So this is the head. Um, this is actually lighter than the Kirby head, now that I've separated it. Uh, so, we got this, and there's Kirby cake in here, so we're going to clean that up. Um, I'm not sure I'll even wash this. I might even just wipe this down with Windex. These usually come pretty clean easily. Um, I am, however, going to pull this thing out. Uh, I'm wondering why I'm pulling this out. These just build dirt. Um, some of them had like a restrictor on here. They, again, they, they, there's, there's some real questions of when they did what. Um, I know on Vacuum Line there's a really good timeline right now that somebody posted up about these. Uh, that explains that, but I don't, I don't have the time to go through and read that to you guys today, unfortunately. I've been really, really busy. Uh, so, we're doing just a basic service. Get this thing clean, get it out of here, back to the customer. We're already going to do more than the customer wants. Uh, that's because that's how I, I service things. I don't just... Yes. So again, there, there's just... With direct air machines, and if there's a greasy carpet, stuff just builds up inside. And rather than it just throwing it into a bag first, or... I mean, some of those C-balls, the, the, the nozzle gets caked on any machine that gets Kirby cake, but the fan housing gets caked, which I just, just, it's avoidable now, we have the technology, it's avoidable. <laughs> um, so the date code on the label was 98, and it is 98 as well, the fan housing, so they were still making a lot of these. A lot of dealers really like these things because the uh, Royal would send you on a cruise if you sold a certain amount. Uh, over a certain period, and they gave all sorts of rewards to dealers. So dealers really like these machines. Um, they're really, really popular among dealers. Uh, that's really who sold them. Uh, at some point when I was in high school, these started appearing in big lots and on the internet and all over the place. Uh, though internet shopping wasn't that big when I was in high school. I was, it's kind of something that only like young, real tech-savvy people still did. Um, I'm just scraping this thing with this because, as you see, I don't know if you guys can see the pile of schmutz I'm making over here. So just scraping the Kirby cake out of here. And I think this is probably going to have to go get a good wash in the sink. I didn't want to, but it's, it's going to need to be washed. Uh, that's the only way this is going to come clean. Oh, man, that's so fucking dirty. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to continue to scrape this, um, and uh, if you get a chance, uh, go down and check out the Performance Review Facebook channel, give us a like, and uh, we're doing discussion on there as well. So now I've taken this off camera to the sink and scrubbed it, and it smells like fresh laundry. Mmm. 
you're going to put this guy back together. And you'll notice a lot of the aluminum becomes discolored uh, over time. And that can be buffed out if you were making this collectible. We've got one O-ring, and we're gonna, what we're going to do with the O-ring. Uh, yeah, where's my polish? Furniture polish or vacuum polish is what you want to use on these O-rings. This helps preserve their life. Um, all right. Do a little bit more. O-ring up nice and good. Is it's gonna go onto that? The O-ring goes in there, and this gets put on here, like so. And there is a seal in between here, but it doesn't need to be changed or renewed like a Kirby seal, generally speaking. Uh, then we're gonna put these pan head screws uh, in here. I'm always going to hand start these being a, a soft aluminum housing. All right. Then you're going to torque it to the German specs of gut and tight. Now after the third one's in, and you see it's still a little loose, but they're all three lined up. Now you're going to torque it to the good and tight. And that will make sure proper cleaner head alignment. Uh, I guess it's possible you could torque it so that the head is sitting like that on the carpet or something like that. So that's done. I blew out. Uh, the motor and wipe the fan down and all that. So that's all taken care of. So to the spec a little less good than tight. We're going to torque uh, our four mo uh, screws over here. And you're going to notice that those are going to be uh, the shorter screws. The reason the shorter ones go here so they don't go all the way through the fan housing. If you mix those up, you put a screw through the fan housing, then things will start to collect there. It won't be the end of the world, but it'll definitely cut down on the efficiency of the vacuum. The customer probably won't notice though. <laughs> I start to see some micro cracks in this thing. This kind of bugs me. So you guys can see that. I don't know if you can see the casting crack right there. There's a little bit of it. Now, I haven't torqued this down. I've just set this in, um, and that was there before I began. You, you can just see the kind of lack of craftsmanship on this model. Um, this one was made in the Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I really am a patriotic person. I really do like U.S. made things, but fortunately, much like the car industry, there were people sleeping <laughs> or something was going on. Alright, that's done. And you don't need to oil uh, I've seen people put a drop of oil on this thing. This thing's supposed to create friction. Um, so, but if it's not working smoothly, what you want to do is you want to take a little bit of steel wool, clean this up. I know this is kind of random, like that. And then take alcohol and wipe that down. Um, and that will 
ooh, it's nice and smooth now. So that's how you smoothen that out. All right, so now it's time to wire this up. Which is uh, pretty self-explanatory. I know some people seem to struggle with wiring it. I really, uh, for likes of me, don't understand that, but we're going to uh, wire these up. I'm gonna get the phone here, but I'll show you what that looks like. Three to black, and then the yellow and the white. Uh, one other thing, I've emphasized this before, but uh, if you got wire nuts that are not gonna be, you know, in a junction box, that are gonna be an appliance, it's gonna be moving around and vibrating, always put a little bit of electrical tape on them. Uh, this sticks as a lock tie, so they don't come loose. Uh, the last thing I want is, are these wires coming loose and grounding out on this aluminum housing, which would conduct electricity uh, very, very well. And I don't think my customers would appreciate a, a zap. Um, but I don't know, maybe, maybe other technicians are upset at their customers and they purposely do that. I don't know. Right, and then this little funny clamp cover thing, which I always thought has, thought was a little Mickey Mouse and weird. This goes on with the longer screws now, um, and you do not tor tor torque this to gluten tight. You torque this just very lightly. You don't want to break something. Again, you know this is like an old school design and it's cast aluminum. It is actually kind of a fragile vacuum in a lot of ways. Uh, that's, um, and this is this is kind of the model when they started to go not downhill because they've been they're pretty consistent, but they just start to change. Things are just they're just not the same as the older versions. They don't have quite as much of a charm about them. So they definitely have a lot more charm than anything you can buy, uh, you know, at a box store, that's for sure. So I guess in that manner I can see this appealing to somebody. Again, you see me putting these screws in by hand. In that this yoke. Uh, again, we're going to make sure everything is torqued. Uh, I'm gonna see if I might be able to clean up a little bit of that play. I might not. Pretty tight. I don't think that's gonna go. Of course, that would be for a Milo motor. One thing I don't have at this store is a good socket set. Somebody in my audience is commenting right now that. Alright. Looks like we're doing this thing officially. Yeah, that's as tight as that's gonna be. Ah. We'll try it this way. I don't hate using adjustables, but... Yep, 
there's not much I can do about that play. I always try. That and you could you would put a scent tab in this if you want, or uh, I think mothballs was one of the things that that was marketed for. Used to be kind of a big thing. All right. So now we're gonna talk. Up, oh, that's missing a light bulb. Let's put a light bulb in. Here's a 110 volt light bulb. Put that in. Standard bayonet bulb, right? Now my light bulb is not burned out. Uh, the problem is this is a 12 volt bulb, bulb that's a bayonet bulb. Uh, I think you can interchange actually one from uh, some old model American cars. But these are no longer available from Royal and they're no longer available from any of the vendors currently. So I don't have any of those in stock to put in. Um, that's one of those things that you need to outsource but I see so few of these with this particular style light bulb that I you know, it's kind of falling by the wayside so they're not going to get a light bulb today unfortunately um, but I will give them the option of ordering it when they pick it up um, so that's that's a little secret to uh, Royals as well next is the adjust right which will suck in like this according when the machine is adjusted right also has which way to put the belt on very important um, Another thing I don't have at this store is a belt lifter tool for a Royal, though I did place some of those on order when I ordered them a brush roller. And again, I started stocking these brush rollers at this store, uh, but for a while they weren't stocked at the store because, again, these are uncommon. So when you're putting this in, something to be aware of is there are a couple different types of these brush rollers and they all look alike so make sure you have the right part number um, see this arrow there's an arrow there then on the cover you're going to see a corresponding arrow see that arrow so make sure those all line up and then these are eccentric of course so make sure that the that side is down or up depending on you know where you want it up on a new one. Um, we're going to put this on. Now, fun fact, the Kirby uh, Neural Belt and the Royal Belt are basically the same belt and uh, I've had experience interchanging them without damaging anything, but uh, curious if anybody else ever did that. Before I put the big screwdriver on, let's put a bag on here. I also cleaned this out, even though it doesn't look like it. I cleaned this out. We got a Royal Heffa B bag, the best bag to can make. I'm gonna put it in here, and it's got a nice gasket. I really can't tell that I cleaned this thing, but it is clean. Uh, and this part has always been a little bit more difficult for me. I've always had customers struggle with this. Is that this thing flexes and moves like this when you go to put it on there. So it kind of fights you. Um, but it also can rip your bag collar right to pieces. Which is something I don't like at all. Alright, so the V-bag is on there. I didn't rip anything. But if you rip it, it's time for another bag. They still make one layer paper bags for this machine, but I would never run such a thing. And we'll particle test this in a minute. Um, Alright. So now we're putting the Royal bag back on. Unlike a Kirby, there's only two notches. So again, that's something to be aware of. The belt's really the only thing that's interchangeable on these, for the record. Uh, 
So we're going to put this on and we're going to clean off the rubber that's on this. So I'm going to run this stone in here and clean this off. A lot of rubber on there. And satisfactory. All right. So yeah, it's the rubber belts when they melt off. They're just, just a hassle. That's why I'm always telling people if you can buy a vacuum without rubber belts, do so. Not to say I wouldn't buy one of these if I saw it at a thrift store or wanted to give it to a friend. The price was right. Um, all right. So again, we're gonna see the just right. See if I put the belt on right. I'm wrong. Whoops. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we put the belt on right now. now. My reason for doing that was to demonstrate just how easy it is for a customer to mess that up. And you saw the belt. There's no belt lifter on this model, so it's a little bit complicated. So we got that. We got that. All right, so I'm gonna wipe it down with Windex and then that, that's the end of the service. Uh, but there's gonna be, we're gonna do a few things with it. First thing we're gonna do, oh yeah, we're gonna test it. And uh, of course we're gonna test it the particle counter uh, as well. So first I wanna explain to you why somebody would buy a Royal. See the edge cleaning on a Royal is absolutely great being a direct air center uh, feed machine. So now let's test it. We're gonna, uh, I ask that you, of course, thumbs up and subscribe to my videos. All right, I got a Royal vacuum with genuine Royal B HEPA bag. So let's first just test the bag. it up and test the bag on the side.
Okay. So brief explanation. The bags are to a lower level HEPA spec than what we're seeing, but they are still HEPA. Um, but the problem is that the machine leaks dirt from this collar, and they could be brand new and they'll do this. I've tested them. Uh, and then through here, it's a very dusty, carbon dusty machine. It's actually sucking up area because it creates so much vibration down at the nozzle that it actually loosens stuff around it. And it's actually sucking dirt that's loosened up around it and then blowing it out through the room through here. So you got more than carbon dust going through here. Um, so that that's, that's why that doesn't filter particularly well. So would I recommend that for allergy sufferers? Of course not. Uh, especially considering the bags don't self-seal. Um, though if you're on a budget, it, you know, it's not a bad vacuum. But those are, that's uh, how it works with a particle counter. As always, please, please subscribe and uh, give this video a thumbs up.